I have most of the time when you're battling with rejection, you have a hard time receiving love. You have a hard time receiving gifts. It's okay for you to give a gift, but it's a real hard time. You have a very, very hard time receiving. Well, the Lord said to me, unless you learn to receive, Tricia, he said, you're not going to be able to really receive my love. And he said, I, there are people on earth that want to bless you, and you're rejecting it. You know, how many times, oh, no, you don't need to do that. Oh, don't do that. Don't give me that gift. No, that, 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 You know, and how do you feel when you want to bless somebody but then the person's doing it? You want to smack them with it. Like, hey, just take the gift. So, you know, we have to be careful of that. So now I'm like, before I used, my toes would curl. And I thought, oh, Lord, Jesus, they're giving me. And it wasn't that I didn't want it. I didn't know how to receive it. And now it's like, bring it on, you know. Now it's different. I've gotten a lot of healing. So anyway, so... Um, so it's, it's the rejection's not the sin. It's our reaction to it. It's our reaction to how we behave. And God wants us to have a broken, contrite spirit. So now in closing, you know, well, well let me read this. When, I'm not going to get into the rebellion. You want to say something, Peace? Yes. Don't you love my wife? Yeah. Uh, so I watched her deal with all these things, you know, firsthand. And I was one of the people that would tell her how much I loved her and she had a hard time receiving it. And, um, you know, I didn't grow up in a similar kind of situation. So I was more used to validation. And, um, so I, you know, I, it just dawned on me that the reason covenant is so important in marriage is because you're, you're unconditionally accepting your mate, right? That's what God is asking you to do. You're coming to an altar. It's not, a, a, a contract, you know, with the justice of the peace. It's a holy thing. And two people who were separate are becoming one now. And that means, you know, even with the flaws that you're not going to bail on them. So you have to ask the Lord to help you understand your partner. And, and it's not always easy to understand because you didn't live what they lived through, but the Lord will help you and the Holy spirit will help you. And, and that's kind of the strategy that you need even if it's just you, if you're, if you're just single, let's just say like in Trisha's example, she had to learn how to forgive her mom and, and learn how to say she did the best she could because we didn't know the pain that she was in, but then we found out the pain that her mother was in growing up. And once you do that, the Lord gives you compassion for the person who hurt you. And then you can truly forgive them. I think it's hard to move forward on your own if you don't do that, but it's also almost impossible and natural without the Lord's help. Because all you could think about is, man, you know, you were you were supposed to support me and you didn't. So how could I let you go for that? Well, because they didn't get the support. It's hard to give what you didn't have. So, you know, the prayer piece is just incredibly important that you just say, Lord, you know, help me even have a conversation with my mother to find out why she might have been that way. And it happened with my father who had a really bad temper and I didn't know why. And I remember like just reacting to his rage and as I got older and I understood the Lord, I would talk to my dad about it. And then I got insight into the why and I could pray and I could see him through a different lens of compassion through the Lord instead of just, well, you didn't do this for me and that for me. Well, Hey, you had a rough life too. Right? So that changed our whole relationship when the Lord put that clue in my mind, but it also changed our marriage when I realized, you know, like we like to say, it sounds almost cliche marriage isn't 50, 50, it's a hundred, a hundred, right? And you can't say, well, your hundred isn't cutting it. You know, <laughs> like your hundred is the best you can do right now. And it's my, partly my job to help you find out who you really are. And for the millionth time, no, I really do love you. <laughs> Even though she's saying she doesn't believe it, it's okay. Cause we're going to be in this thing forever. And look, that's part of the problem in the culture today is people just live together and they think they can have all the benefits of marriage without the commitment Look, it's just a blatant lie. You know, you're standing on an altar and you're saying for better or for worse, and two are going to become one, which means, you know, I heard a psychologist say, you don't want to win a fight with your spouse because then you're living with a loser. It's not a fight with a win and a lose, right? We're allies, not adversaries. Not that Trish would ever want to fight, but just, you know, love you. About to have one right now in public. <laughs> no, we're not. But here's the other thing, too, what he said. If um, Now, sometimes you're not able to talk with your parent. Sometimes they're very abusive. 
Sometimes you've endured a lot of trauma, but see, our Father in heaven will help us reconcile. And there's redemption in the blood. There's redemption in bringing your hurts and bringing the situation. He's the only one that can help us to forgive. We, we can, you know, and like what we, when we're praying with people, it's, Lord, I choose to forgive my mother. I choose to forgive my father for such and such and such. And he's the one that brings the healing in. But it's being intentional. It's not, well, I have a right to walk in forgiveness. No, you don't. Because if you don't, it's like carrying, you know, a dead person on your back forever. And I, heard, I think it was Sergio Scatolini or somebody I heard say that um, it's like you having a bottle of water and you have 1% of sewage, sewage in it and, and drinking it. You know, that's what unforgiveness is. It's a disgusting picture, right? But, but that's what unforgiveness is. We can't afford to walk in unforgiveness. Right. Cannot. And, it's, and, and um, Jack Hayford wrote a book. It was called The Gift of Forgiveness. And on the cover, it had this beautiful big pink package. And he said it was God's gift for us to forgive. And that always stuck out with me. So we have to understand that the Lord Jesus, you know, came to set the captives free. And he doesn't want us operating in that place of, of rejection. And, you know, again, when my, I forgot about that. When my husband, the first three years of marriage, I didn't believe he loved me. I thought, yeah, sure, you know. And and my, pro- I'm thinking, you know, why would he love me? Well, why would he love me if I don't love me, right? So God had a really deal in my heart. And I said, Lord, I don't know how to do this. But he said, well, I want you to receive the word. Because remember, at the time, there wasn't a whole lot of stuff on deliverance. And he started to bring me through and teach me about how to get set free. And, to, and it was a process, of how to get set free and, and had, it, had, you know, demons cast out of me and how to be set free and then emotionally get healed, have my soul healed, all right? So um, in 1 Samuel 15, 23, it says, For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry, because thou has rejected the word of the Lord, he's rejected you from being king. Now he's talking about Saul. And when there's rejection, there's rebellion because you can either take on the personality of a passive aggressor or you can be very in your face, rebellious. I'm not doing anything. I'm not listening to you. Don't tell me what to do. You know, I took that route. (laughs) Don't tell me what to do, you know, because you didn't trust anyone. You were suspicious and you got that hard edge and that's not God. God doesn't want us to behave that way. And so, you know, again, it was a process, and I had to renounce the rebellion, but rebellion was also a way of protecting me. So I thought. And so, but you're operating, at, it's as a sin of witchcraft. And witchcraft, it, it doesn't just necessarily mean that you have, you know, that you're, you're putting curses on people. It's control, manipulation, and dominance, where you try to control everything. And you try to, um, you know, take control and and you know again it's all about protecting yourself all right 